Hey, Noah. The porta potty can go, right? Right. Well, let's get that bitch picked up. $1,300 a week. Porta potties. What the hell? God almighty. I bowed his throat when I found that out. Noah! What's up, Mr. Matthew? Okay, these handrails? Keep them, take the... I think we need to get new handrails here. Around really? this house? Yes. Hello! Are you guys happy? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... When do we want to get the kitchen here? You think next week we'll be ready for the kitchen? It's a good layout in it. I love the layout of this house. How do you like this house? You like it? When do you think we have it finished? Uh, maybe next week, Friday. I think it's fine, man. We just change the... Yeah, we need to pull that out, and when the guy comes to do the our templates, we need to have that ready to go. Okay. But I think we try to get a house like this done in eight to nine weeks. Every now and then you just have one house that kind of lingers because you've got to move crews back and forth, and because Mountain Brook is only doing um, FaceTime inspections, it just took a little longer and we just like didn't have a crew here for probably a month. Some of these guys that that um, are paying high interest on their money, they can't afford to do that. Um, you know, in, in my case, the, probably the worst thing that's happened is the market has improved since I bought it. So thankfully, it's not really costing me money um, taking a little longer on this house. If the market was not appreciating, it would start costing money. Hey guys, we're here with Greg Comer. He's a realtor with Really South, a really good friend of mine. We do a lot of business together. We are checking out this house in Homewood. It's in a really good location. We're hoping to get it under contract in the next couple of weeks. All right, you saw driving up, uh, great neighborhood. Absolutely. Great street. Yes. Money shot. Yes. Downstairs, we've got about 2,000 square feet. Okay. The layout's a little challenging. In it is challenging. Yeah. And that's, I want to talk to you about what I think the fix is. I'd like for us to end up at a four, four and a half, two down, two up. I think the living room stays. So there's like there's space is. above us. There's space above us. So I've been working with Greg for, for quite a few years. Great guy. We get along well. Um, he's friends with my family. Um, and we do a lot of business together. And I think maybe this stays about like it is, this bedroom and that bathroom. All of this could come out and work the staircase in to this space so that you end up upstairs in the middle, not on the far end. This would be, in the new world, this would be master bath. Um, I guess right now it technically is master bath, but you see it's passed through, so that needs to change. Master, decent size, bigger closet would help. And on the other side of this is the fireplace. So I'm, I'm not sure, Matthew, that any any of this really needs to change right here. I think it's just the center. And maybe just move the kitchen completely, right? It'd be nice if the kitchen were the whole yeah, width maybe, of the depth maybe the Yeah, maybe the kitchen house. is in the middle of the house and then have the, the master on the right as you walk in, the whole master suite. That was my first thought. Are you thinking finish anything out here or no? You know, I don't really, there's a, a bathroom down here. Uh, I maybe leave that for yard work, you know, rinsing off when you're sweaty, whatever. But I think all of this just gets pulled out. And cleaned. Oh yeah, I agree. Those old houses will have partial finished basements, um, crawl space. Uh, so that I would call a partial finish, partial crawl space. Greg had the idea of creating a back porch that you could park underneath. Um, you know, I think that's an okay idea. Those things cost money. So you have to pick and choose what money items you're gonna do. You can't do it all. It's gonna be a challenging house. Um, there's just, instead of having one or two challenging things, it seems to have a lot of challenges. But I love challenges. I love flipping houses. I'm gonna try to buy it, make it work. 
So, Greg, do we paint this brick, and do you think the buyers would want the brick painted? I don't think you do paint the brick. Okay, we wore the paint, which is not a big deal. Because, I mean, God knows we use paint on every house we, we, we buy. But I know. We, we need to tell him, I guess we can ask those buyers today. I know we have to, uh, we have to work with the HOA on colors and approvals. We got like two times too much paint then. Do, do we know the, who's over the HOA? Yes. Okay. Do you think we even ought to mess with that or just come here and do it? Let me make a phone call. Ask for forgiveness. Yeah, because it, it won't be anything crazy. I'll figure that out. Okay. The front facade to me is kind of like a southern living, I don't know, what would yeah. you call? Big, Big huge country front porch. porch. Look at, yeah. Symmetrical nice. fireplaces on, uh, on both sides. Obviously, the kitchen, that unusual for, uh, for Matthew, is to buy a house where the kitchen won't change. Not much will change here. Cabinets are new and in nice shape, nice countertops, appliances are new, custom bar top. That island countertop is wood and the perimeter countertop is uh, stone. Um, that's really definitely a popular look right now and I'm gonna start doing more and more of the wood tops on the islands. I will have to make some changes because I don't like putting a sink with a wood top. So um, I would probably try to keep the sink in the perimeter with the stone tops. The fixtures, of course, will change. Some work in the laundry room. Laundry room's there off, off of the kitchen. This house has master on the main, on the main this way. So we're in the master. Uh, wh what's nice about this master is that it has a masonry wood burning fireplace. There are gas logs there now, but obviously you could burn wood uh, wood in that fireplace. We already have smooth ceilings. They're high and nice, heavy molding. This is a double double width, double door pass through into master bath, which is a good. It's a good footprint. This will change. It's all like of a this, salesman, isn't he? All I of love this it. will. All of this was work from the previous uh, previous owner that will come out. And this is master closet, which is nice size. Greg, do we keep the hardwoods in the master bath or do we change that? Keep them. I kind of agree. No, we, yeah, we'll keep the the hardwoods. You think that these lights are Dining okay, Greg? Dining area off the kitchen. Previous owners used this as an office, but I think this is, uh, this is dining. Entry foyer, high ceilings. That railing, I think, may, may change. You could use this room for whatever you wanted. Maybe a piano. Yeah. Large living area, second fireplace. What, what is this room? This is a parlor room. Or maybe you would think of it as a formal dining room, sitting room. So when you, know, you have company, you come in here and you sit and chit chat and smile with your nice furniture and everything's pretty and clean. You don't go in the family room where That's right. everything's a disaster. Yeah. What kind of light would you put in the middle? Um, you know what it really needs? Probably some cans. Cans. Four cans Not a in the corner. Right. Four cans in the corner. Hardwood stairs, which is nice. No carpet on the stairs. And hardwood in the upstairs hallway. And we've got what? Three bedrooms up here. One on each end and one in the middle. In the middle. And is that two bathrooms up here, I think? Yes. And this is walkout attic storage space, which people love. Great spot for, you know, Christmas and holiday kind of stuff. Hey, Noah, you might as well just get a new heat and air unit over here. Because it's pretty rough. It's pretty old. Everybody knows right now the market's really tight. And only, By tight, what do you mean? I mean there's no inventory. There are right. five buyers for yeah. every house. Right. On occasion, with a house like this, uh, we'll contract before it's listed. Uh, sometimes it's a compliment, it's Matthew's compliment to me. Sometimes it's our compliment to other agents or to a buyer. Uh, in this case, we're, we're working with <clears throat> another agent who is working with clients that are moving here from, or have already moved here from out of town. They're in corporate housing and uh, we've contracted at 500. Usually what we'll do is uh, kind of throw out our highest number, um, list price, and it, uh, if a buyer comes to the table um, and I can do a pre-sale, I'm usually okay with that. Because you know, houses will only appraise for so much. 
Matthew and I have learned to, we do pretty good on pricing, I think. Took us a while. I would say, we're going on at 300. Matthew would say, <laughs> a week before we list, a day before we list, 320. You dang like, right, oh, baby. No, I don't know about that. Okay, 310, and then it sells for 320. Sometimes. It took me yeah, a while yeah. to learn. Ma and Matthew's going to add 20 grand, so now I just add 20 grand. He doesn't have yeah. Interesting enough, the seller was a previous house flipper. I'm excited about the work he's already done to the house. He's put a lot of, of hard work and labor into it, and um, I think it'll be another easy flip. Right now, I am trying to get as many flips in inventory that I can move quickly because people are needing inventory in houses. So um, I'm trying to find as many of the easier ones as possible right now. Let's just see how things go tonight. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. We're meeting the buyers tonight and do that. I hope they like bamboo. I know, right? Woo. It gives me a little insight on like what it would be like to be a, a client, you know, a, a buyer walking in the house with you. It's, it's pretty smooth. Yeah. Yeah. It usually isn't quite that smooth with me. No, usually I open the front door. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, and it usually has a stench to it or no lights or something. Yeah.